Greetings, all you heroes in training. I'm Dizdin coming at you with My Hero Academia, Chapter 216, titled The Conclusion of Class A vs. Class B. As we see in the final moments of the final battle, where Midoriya is taking down Shinzo, he laments. Well, Shinso laments about the fact that he was caught with his own binding club. How he feels that he wasn't able to put his best foot forward, considering the battles that he's seen up until this point. The effort and the struggle that the other students display. He's being a little down on himself because he feels like he isn't measuring up because of that. Which is actually fairly interesting because that's a similar mindset to Midoriya, where he felt that he needed to work harder and do a lot more in order to catch up. But, you know, this doesn't discourage Shinzo. He was glad to have had the opportunity to try to, you know, be able to match up with the other Hero Core students. And we see that all four members of the fifth match team, Class B, 1B, have all been captured. And we even get their um, hero names as a secondary thing. Whereas, you know, Monoma the fifth is called Phantom Thief. We have the Poltergeist user Emily, the Size Changer Rule, and the Twin Impact Mines. As well as. Shinso, who's still just known as Shinso. And we come to find out that Midnight, in place of, you know, since Aizawa, um, All Might, and uh, Vlad King have all gone off in order to, you know, try to intercede in the fight, Midnight has taken over commentation, uh, commentary because, you know, a lot of the students were wanting an impartial, you know, person. Which is the real irony of Midnight being included since, you know, her original concept was to be the teacher of Class 1A, but it was turned over for Aizawa because Aizawa would be the more harsher person of the two. Midnight was is a little too kind in certain situations, which is ironic given her more dominatrix uh, tendencies. But overall, it's decided that Class 1A is the victor of the overall battle training simulation, as Class 1B ends up lamenting their loss. And during the discussion of, hey, this is what you did right, this is what you did wrong, Shinso immediately points out that he is still lacking, and he wonders if it's even possible for him to even transfer into the hero course, which, you know, Black King's just like, what, he knew? But it's just like, no, well, it's pretty easy to guess that this is what this was about. Um, he was actually pretty happy that he got the opportunity to try to go in and show off twice for that matter what he's capable of in different situations. You know, he... But, at uh, you know, for the most part, Aizawa puts that a little bit to the side as he wants to discuss the others first and foremost, specifically Midoriya and what the hell happened there with the Black Tendrils, which, you know, of course, of course, Tokoyami and I think, I can barely remember his name, Kurogiri? <laughs> oh no. Um, they're immediately interested because they were these jet black tendrils and all this stuff. And they're just like, wait, well, isn't your power super strength and all that good stuff? But he realizes he has to try to kind of play it off for the most part. So Deku just plays it off as there was this power inside me that I couldn't control that suddenly turned up. It was fairly terrifying. But thanks to Uraraka and Shinzo's intervention, I was able to regain myself. If it hadn't been for that, I don't know what would have happened, so I'm very thankful to Shinzo. Shinzo admits that, admits that he was just trying to provoke Midoriya in order to get him to 
the brainwashing underway. But Midnight interjects saying that, you know, Uraraka was the real MVP as she really just jumped in headlong into harm's way in order to try and help Midoriya. And we have this really intense moment from Mina where she's just like, wow, y yeah, Uraraka, you just jumped in quick as possible and then wrap your arms tightly around it. And the face she makes is literally horrifying. Like, I've never been just, like, really creeped out by Mina, despite the fact that her appearance, you know, would give you every reason to be creeped out by her, but, you know, she, 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 she is so invested in people's love lives, and the fact that Uraraka had previously continuously dodged any question Mina had made about Uraraka's love life, she's just like, I've got you now. And Uraraka turns beat friggin' red. It is so adorable. But she says she just kinda jumped in without thinking. You know, she felt that she had to go in and help him. And Aizawa, you know, remembers the time when Uraraka said she just wanted to go in and save people. That's all she really wanted to do with her abilities. And he feels that Uraraka has matured and grown in her own special way. But Shinso ultimately states that <laughs> Izuku is also beat red as well, I love it. Um, Shinso also states that he wasn't doing it for Midoriya's state. He, you know, Uraraka had given him some direction, not to mention with the fact that, you know, his team was actually being a little bit threatened by all the black dendrils you know he did what he did because he wanted to beat Midoriya in the end and he feels that was a very selfish thing he was only focusing on himself and Aizawa just pretty much strangles him with his own capture claw and everybody's just like ah corporal punishment call the parent teacher association but Aizawa points out, it's just like, dude, no one was asking for anything more than that from you. You know, just the fact that you even tried is good in and of itself. You know, that's what training is for. That's what, you know, taking the time and investment to see what you can do is all about. If we expected perfection, we wouldn't have schools. You know, this would just be a showing ground rather than a training ground. Well... We try to get the most ideal situation as possible, but ultimately, I think for the sake of others to save people it takes a lot more than just, you know, having good intentions. You know, you'll never be able to help or save anyone unless you find your own personal strengths and, you know, discover your own personal weaknesses. And honestly, with your actions right here, you know, as I was just like, dude, you pass. You've passed with flying colors in a lot of ways. And even Midoriya comments, it's just like, dude, Shinsa, you lured me into a battle where you really got to shine. You know, with the falling pipes and the way you wielded those binding cloths like Aizawa. Well, your abilities are pretty great. Even in the first match, you really did a lot of good stuff that nobody was really expecting from you. And ultimately, Izuku's just like, look man, if anything, out of the two of us, I may have won, but it just showed that I have a long way to go in comparison to you. And ultimately, it's decided that, you know, Black King even looks over to some of his students and just like, mm. But it was ultimately decided that Shinso will be joining the Hero Course as of his second year at UA. Which is very interesting because we are moving time forward. Eventually, we will have Shinso in one of the classes. Although, which class it's gonna be is not yet known yet. Although, I love when Mina interjects in the comments saying, Hey, could we uh, transfer out Minetta? He's kind of the worst. <laughs> Which is just hilarious because it's something that so many people have stated. It's unfortunate too because Minetta is the author himself, Horikoshi's 
own perverted, per perverted mind jacked up to 11 and put on full display, but, you know, <laughs> he always laments the fact that Minota has become such a hated character, so he's just like, oh man, uh, I'm, I'm really that bad, huh? <laughs> and given some comments he seems to receive on Twitter for some of the stuff he draws, uh, 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 that's a, neither here nor there. Monoma also kind of interjects that, you know, today's a dark day for Class B, but we've lost the battle, not the war. You know, I wasn't counting on the fact that Midoriya's quirk would have been a dud for me. You know, I say we just fight it out here and now and just get into it. And then Midoriya laments about the fact that, you know, man, I was worried that Monoma's limbs would fly off when he activated the quirk, but it just it was a blank ability, so it's very weird. So that leaves a lot of questions in terms of, you know, the abilities that Midoriya is able to show. But we end our chapter with a really interesting thing, with Aizawa calling out to Monoma that he wants to bring Monoma along to see Eerie, which is an interesting situation, an interesting pairing. But Horikoshi has also gone on record saying that, you know, he also is kind of sad that Monoma has been seen as such a detestable person to a certain degree, because that was not his original intent. It was just that Monoma had gotten the wrong impression about Class 1A from other people and word of mouth and stuff like that that he never really took the time to get to know them. So maybe this is Horikoshi trying his best in order to get Monoma back into a more favorable position with the fan base. But overall, it was a good chapter. I'm glad Shinso made it in. I doubt he wouldn't have, wouldn't have gone through all this trouble if there wasn't like serious consideration of putting him in. That's not as if they're all the hard work he's put in just to become a member of the Hero Corps. And I'm glad, I've been waiting a long time to see more of Shinsa in the continuation of his own personal story arc. You know, that's the greatest thing about My Hero Academia. Yeah, it's about Deku and his life and struggles, but the author does a great job of bringing up all these other characters. You know, where he can. I just, I'm waiting for you know, Yagurosu to really get a solid win sometimes because she loses more often than not and it just makes you forget that she was also put in on recommendation but a lot of other students who were put in on recommendation also ended up not really being up to snuff for the most part in certain ways so that's a little bit of a testament to the fact that now, being talented isn't all it's cracked up to be and doesn't always mean you are the best of the best. It just means you're pretty good. But hey, tell me your thoughts on this chapter in the comment section below. What did you think about Shinso in the battles overall? What do you think about Deku's new powers and how he has to train even more and even harder? You know, just in order to get those under control. And how many more quirks do you think he will activate in the next upcoming story arc? What do you think the next story arc's gonna be on top of that? What does Aizawa want with Monoma? And how does Eri play into it? Or should I say, you know, what does Aizawa and Monoma's connection want? What does he want to bring about from it? Now, it's a pretty interesting situation. Now, do you think Monomo uh, actually gets some time to really shine? Because, you know, Urukoshi was trying his best in order to make Monomo a little bit more sympathetic during his past few chapters. And do you feel that it worked in any capacity? But hey, until then, leave me a like if you like what I had to say in this video, or a dislike if you feel that I wasn't saying the right things or doing the right things, you know, that'll help me for future videos in order to improve. And hey, how about subscribing for more super heroic My Hero Academia manga reviews. But until then, I will see all you students in the next class. Bye-bye.